I'm pregnant. Just kidding. With a thesis. <laughs> My good friend recently got pregnant and got me thinking and get excited about all the experience she's going to have. So I googled different trimester of pregnancy and I want to share this little different insight on how now I see PhD. A lot of people compare PhD as giving birth. And if I need to explain it to someone who has not done it, here's my tick. <sighs> Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for PhD students to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. And today, I don't know what this fall into a category of. Um, I guess this gives you some support to recognize where you are. And if you identify yourself as different trimester of the pregnancy of PhD, I would say research is not a linear process, meaning you don't work more days and you get linear increase in your productivity. There are days that are doing a lot better than the others. There are days that are really depressing and you need to push through them. I always explain like a bacterial growth curve. When you are sitting on a project for some time and it's not quite growing, it just means you may need to keep pushing a little more and then it will start to exponentially increase over time. And sometimes if you had a lot of progress and you want to dwell on it to get productivity, guess what? You are in the plateau phase and you just need a break. Knowing how you operate as a human is really important as you develop your thesis. So let's dive in. A lot of people, when they first got pregnant, they report morning sickness. They got a lot of fear. Should I tell everyone about this yet? I also feel excited. Yes, I will be a mom and this is new. In PhD, we share similar <laughs> symptoms. First, you got proud that, yay, I got in in PhD program. Should I tell everybody about it? What if I don't finish? And you also got imposter syndrome. Am I good enough to be a mom? Am I good enough to get a doctor degree? Those are common questions to ask. The second phase will be the second trimester. You start to get in the flow. You start to do yoga with your bum and you start to tweet about your bum. And you got the identity that you are a mom. The same as PhD, you may get into a more productive state where you hit the exponential growth. You know when to go to work and what time works the best in the lab with no distraction. That's the second stage so that you can collect a lot of data, be productive. In the final phase, mostly the writing phase, you are so pregnant with data, a lot of folders, a lot of paper that you need to read. You get a little overwhelmed. The defense is like for the first time someone needs to give birth, what happened? You also worry about the next step. What if I don't find a job, if I finish? you survived and you got your PhD, hashtag finish and hashtag doctor. You have a new identity, like mom is an identity. Do you let that label stay with you the whole time? It's true that a lot of PhD students who've gone through the process, they do get a little depressed and they start to question if they should have done it at all. Knowing everyone has gone through the same phase is helpful. This video, it's an overly simplified view of how PhD work and maybe a little light jokes about how pregnancy is similar. All these stages can still get mingled together. You can still have phases of insecurity, imposter syndrome. Time to time, you can be productive in your first year. I'm not saying that you will have absolute line of trimester in your PhD, but just bear in mind, research is not linear. Whatever you were experiencing yesterday may not be the same as tomorrow. What's important is to be synchronized with your baby, hear what it needs from you, provide what you can with the resources that you have. And there is no better mom than the other. You don't compare your baby with the other's baby. You just do your best in your situation and your resources, and that will be a baby that you'll be proud of. 
maybe you can relate to either one or two or all of these phases and to know that you are not alone. More importantly, I'd like to suggest what you could do with your 10% investment of your week. If you missed my video on professional development, here's a link down in the description box that you should look at after this video. How you should invest 10% of your weekly working hour on a subject that will bring more productivity to your overall project. With your first trimester, you're starting to learn your discipline. Most of the 10% should go to note taking, learning how to manage your project, how to clarify project objectives. Those will help your project growth in the long run during the starting phase of PhD. In the second trimester, I hope that you will learn to communicate your project because for a lot of people after your first year, you start to get, get into this analysis paralysis period that your project is no longer simple enough for you to explain it to a grandmother or a 10 year old. So build that communication skills by challenging yourself to talk about your project to people who has no idea what your research background is. In the last trimester, you are preparing to get graduated. My suggestion to the third trimester is to start spending 10% of time networking and have multiple career plans. Contact all the leading professors in the field, start writing them greetings, email, Christmas card to make sure they know you are finishing your PhD and you are interested in a postdoc. The same for people who want a job, they don't come to you. You have to start asking questions, asking for informational interview with people in the career so that by the time you finish PhD, you already build the knowledge of what is the type of job that you like to do, what are the type of jobs that you don't connect with, does it fit your lifestyle. So those are the 10% that in the last year. Don't forget PhD who just finished giving birth. Mother got into depression. After they given birth, they feel lost in the new identity, also the work required for taking care of the baby. But I think in PhD, we face another type of challenge. It's easy to feel isolated once you finish PhD. My suggestion to that is make sure to stay in touch with PhD alumni. I went to America as a postdoc. The second year we started having a postdoctoral association, the best time of being a scientist is to be surrounded with people who are also qualified as PhD. You share similar struggle, fear, and you can exchange practical tips like what we are doing right now. There are people like you out there who are willing to share the experience. Sometimes they can be three years after PhD, five years after PhD, and they are willing to give you the experience because we all know how hard it is. So with that, I have all the three trimester of pregnancy PhD comparison, as well as my own personal take on how you can take control in these phases of life. It's exciting to get a doctoral degree, and I hope this video is going to help you to be even better and getting the most out of this experience. This is not practical tips, but I just hope to get this out there. I think all PhD students are rock stars. You get this and it's not a linear process. If you enjoy my sharing, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you will get some random surprises like this. I don't know whether PhD community approve of my analogy. Um, anyway, I'll see you the next time. Thank you for watching.